Hello, hello, my name is Emilio, and in this video, we're gonna be looking at how to build your own lab at home using some spare equipment. Before we do get into that, please remember to, as always, subscribe to my channel, clicking on that bell to be kept up to date with all of my videos. It also helps me to grow my channel and continue to release great new content. Let's go through that video right now. So building a lab with some old equipment at home. You could have some old computers, some old PCs, you could have some old switches, some routers, and you can actually use all of this to build your home lab. You could also use your current computer, your main computer as part of your lab environment. Apart from the hardware that you may have laying around that you could use, we're also gonna talk about the software and the sorts of configurations that you could consider when you are building your home lab. Make sure you also stay till the very end of this video where we are gonna be covering and showing you essentially my setup, the hardware that I use and some of the software that I use in my home lab to maybe give you some ideas on what you could be doing. Now, before you even consider building a lab, the question you need to ask yourself is why do you want to build a lab? What is the purpose of you building a lab? Is it for learning? Perhaps you're in IT and you just want to learn. Perhaps you just want to just build some equipment. You just want to play around with some stuff or maybe just because you want to do it just for the sake of doing it. You've got some hardware, some stuff laying around, not being used. You thought, well, why don't I build myself my little network, my little lab environment at home just for playing around with it. And you also want to ask yourself, what are you going to be setting up in your lab? What is the uh, end goal? What do you want to say if you're going to be learning? Do you want to be learning about server stuff, infrastructure, virtualization? Do you want to have a media service set up? Do you want to have some file servers? Do you want to learn about networking and routing? For whatever the reason, you've got to think about that now because your lab build will be swayed in a particular area depending on what you want to achieve from it. If you are also interested, if you want to perhaps invest in some hardware for your lab, perhaps you've only got one PC spare and that's about it. You can look in my show notes, in my description notes in this video for the equipment that I'm using uh, in my lab and even with uh, around my place. Um, you can actually look at that. I've got all the links to Amazon to go and purchase them if you do want to fancy up your home lab. So let's look at really the minimum gear, some sort of a server. That's really where you would start. You need to have a computer that is set up as a server. So build a server. Now we're gonna talk about what sort of servers you could build, but really having a spare computer, one, two, three, four spare computers, even one, just to get started, that is gonna be set up as a server. This could be an old desktop, this could be an old laptop, it could be a Lenovo, Dell, HP, could be a PC that you've built yourself, could even be a Mac, whatever it may be, get yourself a computer that we're gonna wipe and then we're gonna install some server software onto it. Now the specs of this computer don't have to be amazing. They can be very, very basic, but of course the better spec your computer is, the more you can do with it. So if you wanna build a server and be able to run a whole bunch of stuff on this server in your lab, then of course the more RAM, the more CPU, the more hard drive space that you have on that computer, the better it will be, the more you'll be able to build. A good place to start is installing something like Windows Server onto this computer, onto this lab computer. You could also install Linux, server editions of Linux. You've got CentOS, Ubuntu, Red Hat. CentOS and, and Ubuntu are completely free. You can download them off for free off the internet. Windows Server, you can also download for free for a full 180 day trial, which is excellent. But really starting with the operating system on this uh, lab computer will help you then get started and then configuring things in future. You could even install some virtualization technology onto it. So you could set up what's called a hypervisor onto your computer. So the big ones here would be uh, VMware's ESXi, which is completely free to hypervise an operating system to allow you to run virtual machines, or even something like Citrix Zen Server would be another good option. Essentially it's an operating system and then you can build multiple virtual machines within this one computer. So you could have Windows servers and Linux servers all running within this hypervisor. Now what I generally recommend is to have at least two computers available. One being a uh, the, the lab computer, say an old computer, and then another computer that will be used to manage this computer. So for example, if you're gonna be building a virtualization 
environment, which is something that I would recommend. You build yourself a hypervisor, let's say VMware, ESXi, you download it for free. I've got the links in my description if you do want to know where to find it. Download it, install it, and then you need another computer to be able to then connect into that ESXi environment. So that could be your own computer, your primary computer, or it could be another computer that you have spare as well. But I would recommend two to at least get started. We'll come back to servers and give you some ideas in a little while. But another piece of hardware that you could use is a, a router, a spare router, Wi-Fi router, modem router, whatever it may be. But some uh, routers um, are laying around in a lot of people's houses. You know, you've got your primary router that perhaps your internet service provider has provided you, or you've you know you've purchased yourself a router from somewhere. But a lot of people have got spare routers just laying around. That would be perfect for a lab. Now, one of the things that you could do is you could set up this lab on its own network. You could set up the router with its own IP range, its own subnet, you can play around with that sort of stuff, organize routing rules. And another great thing is a lot of routers come built in with firewalls. So you could actually test all of these firewall technologies, terminologies, move data in and out, restrict ports, you know, do port forwarding between different IP ranges, between different devices on your lab. Now it's completely optional, but what I would recommend is generally because your lab is gonna be for testing, for training, um, perhaps just for, for playing around, you wanna maybe keep it separate to the rest of your network in your home. You know, you've got your primary network in your home where all of your, you know, your phones, your TV, your, your gaming consoles, whatever, are all connected into it. If you've got a lab, and you're doing a whole bunch of testing, you're playing around with things, you're playing things, you're playing around with things like routes and firewalls and servers and building, you know, DNS and whatever it may be, um, it may be a good idea to have that on a separate isolated network because you're playing around with stuff that could impact your other network. So sometimes having it separate, having your production network, all of the stuff in your home in one network, one IP range, having your lab in a separate IP range, and then having a spare router in the middle to be able to route the traffic between the two uh, would be preferred. Because the last thing you want is for you to go and mess around with something in your lab, and then it impacts on your other network, and then you start having issues on your network. So it's not essential that you have a separate network for your lab to your rest of your network in your home, but it just ensures that things are kept more isolated and more secure. If you are pretty good at setting up security and making sure that things are controlled correctly, then you could possibly have it all in the same one lab. And the other thing is something that I like to do, for example, is that my lab environment sort of feeds into the rest of my network. So in my lab environment, I've got certain technologies, which we're gonna talk about in a little while, such as a domain controller, DNS, DHCP, which actually I used quite a fair bit with the rest of my network in my house. Now, if you have a spare switch, that is also great because that way you can actually plug in all of your computers into this switch. Plugging it all physically over ethernet cables generally is gonna be faster than doing it over Wi-Fi. Um, but if you even have a router, perhaps your router has a switch built in. A lot of routers nowadays perhaps have four ports on the back of it, which also can act as a switch. Otherwise, if you have another switch, that's great. You can pick up switches quite cheaply as well. But then this way, you can actually plug things in. You can actually make sure that everything is running over ethernet. But it's not essential. As I said, you can still use Wi-Fi. I would recommend going over ethernet because you can actually uh, control things a little bit better. But even if it's over Wi-Fi, that's fine. You'd, you would just essentially have to create your own Wi-Fi network in your lab environment that is separate to the rest of your network for that lab purpose. So here's an example of a computer that I have got in my lab. This is a computer that I've had for a long time. It was used to be a computer they used to use in my network, but now I wanna use it in my lab. So this PC has an okay CPU inside of it. It also has a little bit of RAM and a good sized hard drive and a network card, which is really all you need to get started. So with this PC, now we wanna get some software onto it, an operating system. So go to your Google machine, download Windows Server. As I said, it's completely for free. You can fully use it for 180 days. You can also go and download Linux, CentOS, Ubuntu, completely free. They've got desktop editions, they've got uh, server editions. And then once it's installed onto this PC, it is now essentially a server. But what I like to do, of course, is install VMware onto it. So you download ESXi completely free off the internet, you install that, the operating system for VMware ESXi onto this computer, and then you can install multiple computers or virtual servers 
onto this one single piece of hardware. Now, the other thing you've got to consider is we talked about it's got a little bit of CPU, a bit of RAM. The better the CPU, the more RAM you've got and the more hard drive space you've got, then the more virtual servers that I can build onto this one computer. Here's something that you need to consider. You install VMware's ESXi onto this computer and then you go and build a Windows server, a virtual Windows server. It's gonna require some uh, resources, right? So you're gonna allocate perhaps one CPU and four gig of RAM onto it. Now that four gig of RAM is gonna use four gig of RAM on that computer, on that physical computer. You then go and build another computer, another virtual server, with another four gig of RAM. You now need eight gig of RAM. So as you can see, the more physical RAM you've got, the better, because you can build more things and you can allocate better specs to your virtual servers. Same way, the better the CPU is, the more allocation of resources you can give to those virtual machines. Then you'd use another computer within your lab or even your primary computer at home to then connect into this virtual server, into this ESXi environment, manage it, see all the back end, and then go and build all of the stuff that you need to build within this environment. You'll need to set up a few things around networking configurations, data stores, which is all of your storage. So having more storage on this PC will also help. So now that you've got an operating system installed, you've got it built, whether you've installed it directly onto that computer, Windows or Linux, um, or you're doing it via a virtualization, a hypervisor, you now need to start thinking about, well, what are you gonna configure? What sort of technology are you gonna now set up on those servers? So now that you've got uh, a server built, you know, whether that be Windows or Linux, now think about what you want to you know, specifically build. For example, build a, a domain controller with something like Active Directory. You can play around with group policies. You could set up DNS. DNS is super, super cool. Um, and you can learn a lot just by understanding what DNS is, you know, DNS is, how it's structured, the different sorts of DNS records. How about DHCP? That's a really good one. If you've got a lab with a lot of different computers, even if you're gonna use your lab as your main, you know, as part of your main home network, having DHCP may be actually really, really helpful to you. That way you don't have to just get your IP addresses from anywhere or from your primary router or manually statically putting in IP addresses. You could have DHCP dishing out IPs to all of your devices on your network, not just your lab environment, perhaps your phones, your TVs and your gaming consoles. Something that a lot of people will use in a lab or even in a home network environment is some sort of a file server. Uh, a place, a single place where all of your data is kept. A lot of people will have things like hard drives and they're just plugging USB drives around devices. Why not set up a server that is a central repository for all of your files? What about a media server? This could be a combination of your file and your media server combined in the one system. A place where all of your home movies, your movies, your TV shows, even maybe photos are all stored in the one centralized location that is then on the network, and that can be seen from any device on your home network or within your lab. What about building a website? If you've never done that before, you could actually host a website from home, register a domain name, and then populate it out to the internet. You can do this on Windows, you can do this on Linux, and even on the software side, you could build yourself some security servers or security protocols built in right to your environment. Build a firewall, build a load balancer, build a proxy server. Uh, you can do all of this all for free. So stuff that I'd recommend is so firewalls and proxies, you can download something like PFSense, completely free. You can have add-ons, and then you can actually go and build a proper security environment in your lab, and even use it in a home environment, in a home network. So of course I mentioned that as a minimum, having two computers is great. One for your lab, and then one to connect to that. So of course, the more resources you've got, the better. So if you have more computers, more computers for your lab, that is even better because you could build not just one virtual server, one not just one VMware or one Windows server or one Linux server, but you could build two or three or four or five. The more you've got, the better because you've got more resources, you've got more CPU, you've got more RAM, and you've got potentially a lot more storage. Something else that could be considered is if you've got a whole bunch of hard drives that are spare, right? So this is not computers that are spare, but hard drives. You've got USB drives all over the place, small ones, big ones, all different sizes you can build what is called a NAS, a network attached storage. Now, normally you would go down to your local computer store and buy a physical device called a NAS, which has all of the disks built in. But what's great is if you've got a spare PC, 
you could load all of these disks inside of your PC or however many disks your PC can handle. You can then go and download some software called FreeNAS off the internet and you essentially convert your computer into a NAS, a network attached storage. The great thing about this, we talked about a file server and a media server. What about having one central PC, whole heap of storage within it, converting it into a NAS with free NAS, and then it's available on the network. So all of your devices on your network within your lab can access this network attached storage from anywhere. So that gives you some ideas. There's a lot of stuff that you can build on the server side. I've got other videos that go into a lot more detail around that. And as I said, if you've got the networking gear available, setting it all up that way, making sure that the different network, different routes, firewalls, all combined together with your uh, server technologies will create you a big lab. Now, before we finish up, remember I did mention that we are gonna look at my lab very, very briefly. So here's some of the stuff that I've got in my lab. So I've kept my lab very, very small on purpose. I wanna keep it very, very niche, very, very clean, very, very easy to use. Of course, yours could look completely different if you've got more computers, less computers, even if you've got some spare servers, bigger servers, things of that nature. But what I've got right here is a couple of computers that are my main primary hypervisors. I've got my Mac mini, next to that I've got an Intel NUC. These two computers have got what's called VMware ESXi version seven installed. They're together uh, configured within a vCenter environment, which is another technology within VMware. And these two computers act as my primary virtualization environment in my lab. I've got a whole bunch of stuff installed onto these computers. I've got a domain controller, I've got DNS, I've got DHCP, I've also got a web server, and I've also got a few other things around security devices such as PFSense and a few other things. I've also then got a primary NAS. So we did mention that we can have a computer set up with free NAS, but I chose to invest in what's called a Synology NAS, so Synology being the brand, and this particular one has four hard drives built in. This particular one has four three terabyte hard drives set up in a RAID. We can talk about RAID in other videos, but essentially we've got here RAID 5, where if I lose one disk, I don't lose any data. So there's different sorts of RAID groups, RAID types, depending on the situation and the scenario. But this is essentially my primary NAS where all of my data is kept. All my media, all my documents. It also stores all the physical storage of all of my virtual machines. My Mac and my Intel NUC are just being used for the resources for the CPU and the RAM and the graphics, but the storage is actually sitting on my Synology NAS. Then I've just got a small little Cisco switch, a Meraki switch, where all of those devices are connected. Apart from that, I've also then got a uh, laptop and another desktop, which is also acting as a server running different versions of Linux. And all of those are connected together in my lab. So if you yourself are thinking about building a lab, uh, hopefully this has given you some ideas and some suggestions as to what you perhaps could build. Do you already have a lab? Maybe you do. Why don't you let me know in the comments whether you've got a lab, what you've got in your lab, what are you currently testing and what's the purpose of your lab? Uh, maybe you're thinking about building one. Let me know what you want to build. That would be really, really good. Other than that, that is the end of this video. I would really, really appreciate it if you like this video, if you did like it. Let me know in the comments what you thought and also subscribe, clicking on the bell to be kept up to date with all of my video releases. It really helps you to also grow my channel and continue to make good content. Thanks for watching, really appreciate it. We will see you next time.